everyone and welcome back to the front line with joe and joe joe pasillo as always joined by joe resinello and once more dear brothers and sisters let us go into the breach thursday night eastern time 9 p.m and i mean it, you know joe and i have said for for the last several years now it's it's like a big you know for anybody who's doing what we're doing over here um both on the radio and and here remember follow us on facebook um, you, uh, Facebook and YouTube till they take us down, of course, but X and rumble, uh, please, particularly X. We're going to try to build up our presence on X. They're serving it up. It's a big fat ribeye with a big fat baked potato. I would say cream spinach, but Joe and I are Italian. So there's a big glob of broccoli alba on there with sauteed with garlic and olive oil, some garlic bread on the side. It's a big fat dinner. It's like, we don't even know what to choose from, but Joe Racinello, here's what I want to ask you. What the hell is this? Uh, Joe, I'm, I'm clueless. <laughs> it's I'm, a crazy, I'm, it's a crazy Canadian getting caught up in the deep state. He's getting I mean, sucked I mean, in. I mean, part of it looks like like it could be real. Part of it looks like it's AI generated. You got the poor should, guy in the back. He's getting sucked back into it. I, what is that? They can't even call it an ocean because they're you know they're 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 running it. They got flags for heaven's sake. Joe, please explain that to me because I'm no. It's I'm, a I'm deep lost. state. It's a Canadian. He's getting sucked down. He's getting sucked down. Nothing like seeing a, a Vietnamese Canadian get sucked into the deep state, Joe. Hey, no, no, again, no, we got no, some no. more people just for a second. So just for some laughs. All right. All right. For some laughs. Thanks for joining us here at the front line with Joe and John. Wait, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. <laughs> That goes to show you that in other parts of the world, I mean... <laughs> It's just so strange sometimes, Joe, what 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 people do. I I I really I really don't get it. Um, you know, and Joe, are you sure they're Canadians? No, I think they're all Vietnamese folks. It's probably the CCP coming after Vietnam. Well, listen, I don't that and then the and the, the CCP are the ones that uh that sent in all that water. Those poor guys, they're running with flags for heaven's sake, Joe Rosano. The flags, they're running they got with nets, flags. Nets, flags, the whole deal. Listen. All right. Li listen. Let me let me ask you a question. You are so much more well in tune to what's going on in Canada more more than I. What is this with the, 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 the another attack on the truckers? Uh, what is, what is Trudeau doing now? Because nothing he does shocks me. Just so like nothing just, the Democrat Party in America about, does. Uh, the headline, and then we can kind of go back and forth. Well, what is the headline? Well, RCMP searches the arrive can contractor's home. His name is Kirsten First. So, so yeah. Joe, for us Americans who don't know what RCMP is, what is that? Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They're the guys that have like the big hats. They're on the horses. They got the red jackets on. So they like actually, they actually go into people's homes, like knock on the door, like I the American FBI. Funny, as an American, I just thought they were like in the movies, but they're actually real. They they're exist. real. All so, right. So they basically, uh, you know, searched this dude's house. Um, he's the second private citizen, the first in 111 years to be called to the bar and admonished. Let me just stop there. I invite everybody to watch this dude get admonished by the bar. It's ridiculous. I admonish you. Who cares? Who cares? Canada, you can't eat. And you're going to worry about this guy, Kirsten, uh, Kirsten, whatever the hell his name is, and he's basically getting admonished. Well, here's the deal. Basically, the general auditor, Karen Hogan, says that GC Strategies received $19 million of approximately $60 million that the government spent on ArriveCam. So basically, it's just mismanagement of money. They're throwing this dude under the bus, and it's an absolute distraction. It's nothing more than a distraction to distract Canadians from the fact that they can't heat their house, they can't buy food, they 
can't put fuel in their car. And basically, he's taking the fall for the incompetency of the regime. Nothing yeah, but- more than that. Nothing more than that. And ultimately, most probably, nothing will come of it. It's just another stupid inquiry. And all you get is the sergeant at arms basically saying, I admonish you. And I say this. Who cares? Who cares? The regime should get admonished because the regular man can't buy a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's what I think. And ultimately, maybe that guy should be running on the beach with the crazy people from Vietnam. Yeah, and, 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 and getting and getting barreled over by that by that water, and you know, I don't want to say drowned. We're not cruel here at the front line with Joe and Joe. Hey, if you're if you're watching this video, uh, why don't you help us out? Share it, share it on X, share it on Rumble, whatever you got to do. Now, Joe, one thing that Trudeau's not inept at, okay, it's spending Canadian tax people's money, okay. So you have you have as far as this the Emergencies Act, you know, like that that's still. It's still in my brain. I can't get my head around it. But as far as the Emergencies Act, that costs Canadians about $73 million so far. $73 million. People can't put can't, can't have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, like you said, or heat their homes. And Canada gets cold. You got to heat your home. Okay. An oil-rich nation, a nation rich in, in natural resources. Okay. They're broke because of idiots like Trudeau. And he's spending $73 million of their money on the emergencies act because a bunch of guys that that are truckers that wanted to protest he wants to call them nazis and a threat to national security i more hate reason Justin, why i gotta be honest to with you. i don't dude. hate most people i despise him more, more reason why they have to distract the canadian people why they're throwing this dude under the bus just pure optics also trudeau recently came out with the budget basically he's making the gen x people pay for the gen z people i don't even know these little acronyms xz but i don't know what gen like, i'm in i don't again, know what he's sure trying to do he's basically saying like I'm going to tax the very, very rich. It's just pure, typical, like liberal, as if he's not very, very rich. And ultimately, it's basically to throw the Canadians a quote unquote bone. It's not going to change your lifestyle one iota, not one iota. It's not going to make your rent go down. It's not going to make the prices of food go down because he caused the inflation. He printed money that you didn't have ultimately, and he cut off your oil and gas. And that kills the supply chain. And that's why you can't eat. So ultimately, again, more optics with the budget. Him and Freeland taking pictures as if they care. Oh, we're going to tax the rich and give to the poor. Meanwhile, he's destroying you. He has destroyed you. And he's throwing this guy, Kirsten, under the bus. Ultimately, he should be thrown under the bus. Well, well, not for nothing. A federal court in Canada basically ruled that uh, that the spending, the $75 million, is, quote, unquote, not justified. And that includes like over like fifteen million dollars for a judicial inquiry, uh, four hundred grand, five hundred grand in charter flights. You got a couple million dollars for hotel rooms for RCMP officers. Okay, I mean it's it's just it's the same old thing. Tax the tax the people, take the money, spend it however you want, give it to your friends because that's really what it is. That's what goes on in America. That's what goes on in Canada. None of this none of this is shocking. By any stretch of the imagination. I just don't know, Joe Resinello. Like, how would we even think in our mind? Now, we as Americans are Canadian brothers and sisters, okay? How would we even think in our mind that a Justin Trudeau could get elected dog catcher at the end of the day, let alone prime minister? Or that a Joe Biden, who can't even string a sentence together, can't even walk up a flight of stairs, okay? Doesn't have an original thought in his head. He's basically the puppet for the third tri- the third term of Barack Obama. How do how do they even have a shot at getting elected? Not like, let's say, uh, uh, it's a tight race against Trump or whatever. How does he even have a shot? Is my question. Let's well, keep it with I, Trudeau. I, 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 Let's keep it with Trudeau. It's a valid, you know, thing to throw out there. Ultimately, it just shows that the deep state and the establishment run the show. And that democracy is a joke because to your point, it's absurd, particularly Joe Biden. Like, no, no offense. It's absurd. He is completely, completely out of it. He should be in in all honesty in about four years. I don't wish him dead, but if he's not dead, he'll be sitting in a wheelchair in a hallway staring into space. This is who is running our country. Then you have Justin Trudeau. 
obviously he has his dad was you know was the you know the you know prime minister at one time he's got the you know the 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 pedigree he's a good looking guy but he he's done a masterful job of moving an agenda Justin Trudeau did a great job of gaslighting saying nothing that's why people should tune him out stop listening to him turn it off the news covers for him cuz they're in on it just as the news is in on it in America he has absolutely destroyed the middle class he prosecuted truckers illegally and when the courts of course after the fact say that Justin Trudeau prosecuted the truckers illegally he basically says well it seemed like the right thing to do at the time and nothing happens nothing happens again that should tell you that you don't live in a democracy that the rule of law does not apply it's all optics they're moving an agenda to forward and he has moved it forward masterfully let me he ask really you a has. question let me ask you a question uh because this is obviously something that's not by mistake uh life site news which is based in in canada okay um, John Henry Weston runs live site news. Why is it in their interest then, Joe Resinello, Nova Scotia just passed a law that allows the government to access private medical records. Now, not having read the entire story or knowing what the motivation is, I'm just going to go out on a limb to all those people watching us here at the front line with Joe and Joe. I think the motives are somewhat nefarious. Please, Joe, correct me if I'm That's wrong. That's very scary. I'll tell you what, the nail on the coffin when we're dead, I mean, dead to rights, by the totalitarian regimes is this digital currency and that when they have your medical records keep in mind canada controls your health care also canada has a maid program suicide legal suicide he's killing his poor he's killing the mentally ill and that door is going to get wider and wider and wider when the government has access to your medical records the government can make decisions that are outside of your doctor and your decisions and that's dangerous and then comes the next step and the final nail on the coffin when we turn into north korea and that is digital currency that is why that is dangerous i do not want the government a to control my health care and B, it's none of their business what I have to say to my doctor or what is my concern about what I need to stay healthy and or the medicine that I take or the medicine I don't take. Joe, but you're you're so wrong. You're so wrong. You want to know why? Because you're just a knucklehead American citizen who's not listening to Dr. Fauci, who, who has the audacity to think that you actually know something about your own, the healthcare needs of yourself, your wife, and your family. You're, who are you to, to, to buck the narrative against the, you know, the, the, the almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci and those like him, by the way, and those people at the CDC, National Institute for Health, World Health Organization. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. What, they, what pisses them off is that we know what they're doing too. Now, later on in the show, we're going to play a clip uh, this chick, I forgot who she is, but she's talking about the necessity of, of getting around the First Amendment because they don't want us talking about Justin Trudeau wanting access to your pro or Nova Scotia in this case. I'm sure it'll go nationwide uh, wanting access to your medical records. Or did you get the, the JAB okay, uh, at the time? Did you do that? Um, are you are you a, a CVID denier? I hate the fact that we even have to talk in code because yet, because YouTube might shut us down. I mean, it's just, I mean, like, I don't understand what it takes for people to wake up. Do you want to be treated like an animal? That's what I like to tell people, because they're treating you like an animal while they're telling you that you're free. You're not free. You're not free. They're patting you on the head. They give you some sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Tell you to go live in a 15-minute city. I tell you, life's going to be wonderful, and don't worry about it, because when you drop dead, there won't be any God to answer to. So you just enjoy yourself. We'll provide you all the sex and drugs you want, all the rock and roll. You'll live in a 15-minute city. You won't own anything. You'll just rent everything. And when the time comes after you had all that fun, if it's worth it for us to keep you alive, we will. We'll pay the health health bill. And if not, we'll give you a bottle of vodka. You could go and drop dead. Joe, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. That's what they want. That's the world they envision. And I think I'm right about that. It's very scary. And I, and again, I think, you know, COVID showed, I think, a lot of people uh, 
the game plan. It also showed, it showed me, I mean, I changed my whole political mindset as a result of what I saw in the last four years, how the game is just, it's rigged, Joe. It's not made for the average person. It really isn't. And they, to be honest with you, it's been done in plain sight. It's it's been done in plain sight. This hasn't been done under our noses. You're absolutely right. Right in front of us, we have allowed this to happen. Go ahead, Joe. But but ultimately, uh, this is where, like, I, I I've say this a lot on the show because I just look at history, how history, how countries have taken power back. Power is never given back. And they took power away from us in America and in Canada. It's not going to be given back. It has to be taken back. And they want the country divided. Listen, the issues are real and there are real like disagreements. We'll just call them that. But ultimately, they're never going to be resolved because the people who control everything won't let them get resolved. Right. That's how it works in America. I can't speak for Canada, but that's what's been going on in America. They don't let them be resolved. They want the issues to be there. They have their pundits. They got Fox News. They have MSNBC. They have CNN. They basically divide the country. And people actually believe that these individuals are their advocates. Right. I mean, that's the saddest. I say this to my wife all the time. You're, you're talking about the politicians or the press? Yes. Like, I'm talking about the people, regular okay. people. They actually think when they watch like Rachel Maddow and then they watch like uh, Jesse Waters that somehow that the politicians that they're exposing and or supporting are their advocates. They're not. Right. Yeah, and by the way, Jesse Waters makes a ton of money. Rachel Maddow makes a ton of money. And all the politicians are rich. They're not in the bucket that you're in. And yet we pit against each other. Yes, the issues are real. We could disagree on a lot of different things. However, they want you divided because you're easily controlled when you're divided. Well, of course. Of course. And people, Yo, and all, yeah. And I, what I'm just trying to say is ultimately how we're going to get out of this. And then we can have a debate that's real. Well, the there, well, debate, the debate is a goal that we need to get to down the road. Joe. We don't have, right. we don't have that. We don't have real debate right now. Right now. It has to be a matter of sheer political will. Do conservatives in, in this country, do conservatives and Republicans, do the conservatives in Canada, do you have the political will to turn this stuff around and you have to have that. And then you could start having maybe some debate. Uh, just want to throw a couple of shout outs out there. Joe, we have a great crowd tonight. Um, it's growing every week. We've got over 130 right now uh, are watching across YouTube, uh, Facebook X rumble. We got FJT. We got Bill, uh, Natalie. Um, so we have a live league chat room tonight. Janet, Marilyn menacing muskrat. I love that one. Um, Janet is here. Ace is here. Kaylee's here. Uh, Mary Pa the Great. Uh, so we got a really good crowd today. Rage, Rage Finder. I like that one. James. So we got a good crowd going on and a good conversation here at the front line with Joe and Joe. As always, Joe, let's uh, let's keep it moving a little bit. You mind if we pivot to America? Now, all Sounds you Canadians good. out there, don't leave us now, okay? Because this all pertains. Anything's going on in America is going on in Canada and vice versa. So you want to talk about division, Joe? and dividing people. How about dividing a family? The Kennedy family just endorsed Biden against their own relative, against RFK. Now, last time I checked, last time I checked, there are many people, Joe Resinello and my family, that would not vote for me if I was running for president because they're <laughs> liberal. Aside from the fact that they think I'm nuts, okay? But they're liberal and I'm conservative. RFK Jr. is a liberal, Joe. And he's not, and his liberalism is not good enough for the Kennedy clan, which, by the way, I don't know why this family, uh, I, I can understand why they rose to prominence, both with the uh, grandpa and his, uh, his election rigging, his stock manipulation and his bootlegging. I get that using his, his, his wealth to promote his family. I get the fact that, that they, that the sons were a lot better than the father. Joe Kennedy Jr. was a lot better than his father. John F. Kennedy Jr. and Bobby Kennedy were a lot better than their old man. But they're going to try to say that, that that Bobby Kennedy and John F. Kennedy would be going for this type of nonsense. In other words, you, you got to listen to some of this crap 
Joe Resinello, that Carrie Kennedy, which is who is a nauseating human being, by the way. She's a nauseating human being. She has said this is RFK Jr.'s sister. She invoked the legacy. This is according to Axios of her slain father, uh, Robert F. Kennedy, uh, and uh, and and John F. Kennedy. And then they have the audacity to mention Ted Kennedy. Ted, Ted Kennedy was a big clump of useless cells who imbibed alcohol and abused women. So you to, to even mention Ted Kennedy with his brothers is ridiculous. Um, but she basically turned uh, she she uh, she she's atta she's attacking uh, Trump. She's attacking her own brother. She's supporting uh, Biden. She's basically talking about his track record. OK, uh, they're 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 beating up on RFK Jr. because they because they know that his candidate, his being anywhere in the mix is a direct threat to Joe Biden. And they're basically just an apoplectic family who does who has no rudder whatsoever. And I don't even know why we listen to them. I don't even know why we listen to them. Well, it's it's actually sad because, to be honest with you, he is a true Democrat. He's a Democrat. I don't I'm not voting for RFK, but I do believe he respects and and loves this country. And we just disagree on on, on a lot of issues. I think he's a, a decent person, to be honest with you. When you listen to him, he he believes what he speaks about and he wants to basically he said it. I want to give the country back to the people. That's a no, no. See, there is the no, no right there. The and let's talk about the Kennedy family. They're above the fray. They're uber rich. Who cares who the president is? Obviously, there's some type of riff going on between RFK and the rest of his family. That's a shame. But the Democratic Party, they are terrified of RFK because he's not going to take votes away from Trump. Trump's votes are rock solid. Trump got a legitimate 76 million votes, people showing up to the polls and voting. And those 76 million, at least 70 are coming back. The Democrats need every single vote that they got and then some. And RFK is going to pull from them. You could tell by the liberal media outlets. They're attacking him. They don't want him to be on the ballot. They're giving him all types of trouble. And he is the variable they can't control. What can they control? They can control the mail-in ballots with the illegal immigrants that come into the country. Oh, now they're attacking that. That's conspiracy theory. I have read that this week because you sign a pledge when you register that says that you are a citizen and you don't have to show I so let me let me let me tell you what, what what we say in Newark. Okay, what you're gonna do with that pledge? Okay, you know what ridiculous. you're gonna do with that pledge? Okay, so I think you know where I was going ridiculous. with that. But, but but at the end of the day, they can control that because they made ballot harvesting legal. They made ma mail in ballots legal, and you don't have to show ID when you register to vote. You well, sign a pledge. Who cares? Right. That's Who what cares? I say. Listen, they're playing. They're playing a danger. You, let me let me see if I could put this in a proper perspective, Joe Rasinello. After nine eleven, I remember saying to myself, "If I was a terrorist, if I was one of these guys that wants to cause problems, okay, what I'm going to do is after nine eleven, I'm going to start to commit random acts of violence. Like if I'm if I'm running a cell, let's say one of these terrorist cells, I'm going to start just shooting people randomly. In other words, and and just because you want. And the reason why I'm saying this is this." Because 9-11, you, 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 that's it. That, that, you, you took your best shot, and in a diabolical way, a diabolically genius way, you succeeded. You killed 3,000 Americans. Um, you took down the World Trade Center. Big blow for, 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 for your cause, okay? All that stuff. But you're never going to be able to do that again. That was, that's it. It was a one-shot deal. What they did in 2020, okay, what the Democrats did, it's a one-shot deal. The eyes are on them now, okay? Even under the surface, I mean, you look what Ron DeSantis did in Florida with just putting in a few basic uh, election reform proposals, okay? And what did we find out? I told you this a million times at the front line with Joe and Joe, that we found out that Miami-Dade County and Broward County are actually red, okay? Because the illegals weren't allowed to vote. Now, you could do that nationwide, all right? And then we could trust our elections. I quite frankly don't. I don't care, YouTube. Here, take me down. I don't care. 
All right. I don't care about YouTube and I don't care about Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg cheated in 2020, takes four hundred million dollars, throws it into. You're going to tell me that, that that Donald Trump didn't get one vote in Philadelphia. Are you going to really you're going to really try to convince me that? But leaving that aside, they're playing a dangerous game when they mess around with both the elections and the Constitution. Now, Governor Janet Mills of Maine has basically said she's going to allow a national popular vote bill to become law without her signature. Because in Maine, you could e she could either sign the legislation and it becomes law, she could veto the legislation and it doesn't become law, or she could just let it go. And the legislature is the one that enacts that into law. Now, her excuse is that she's saying that Maine is going to vote with whatever the popular vote percentage is. So if the popular vote is for Biden, let's say, then Maine is going to vote for Biden. Here's the problem with that. You don't represent the people of America, Governor Mills. You represent the people of Maine. And if the people of Maine, under their power, under the Electoral College, vote for the Donald Trump, you're supposed to certify for Donald Trump. What are you going to say to the people of Maine who voted a way that you don't want them to vote? Oh, we're going to vote according to the national the the national popular vote no governor you can't do that you see now again I, maybe i'm just a naive ape okay but here's my thing she's willing to forsake the people of her own state to thwart donald trump joe i need i need a comment from you brother well getting to that same co uh, conversation she's one of 16 states and the district of columbia that's willing to do that because it advantages joe biden once again, and to your point, it's not about what the people want. That is nothing more than manipulation. And right. people, listen, you can hate Donald Trump, but this is no longer about Donald Trump. Joe Biden is not going to absolutely positively for one day campaign. He's not going to campaign. He's not going to debate. Their way to win is strategies like that. Right. Their way to win was to let in 7 million people and in some cases fly them to certain cities and basically ballot harvest, register them, drop the ba the mail-in ballots into the, the bins, and that's the strategy. Period. End of story, Joe. They have nothing to say other than they hate Donald Trump. They have nothing to hang their hat on other than those strategies. And ultimately, what that should say to people is this. They're telling you who the president has to be. Your right. voice and your vote means nothing. By the way, allowing, and this is the globalist strategy, why is it that all the globalist countries all over Europe, all in Canada, U.S., are allowing immigrants, illegal immigrants, to come into their countries? Because it's a way, it's a cheap way to influence an election. I give you a little bit. I give you a crumb. I let you come into the country. I don't help you. Otherwise, I basically, in many cases, at least in the United States, these people are frigging on the street. I work in New York City. I have seen families. I have never seen that in New York City. I've worked in New York City many, many years. Families begging on the sidewalk. You see that in third world nations. This is New York City, one of the richest cities in the world, the biggest city in America. You basically allow these people to come in. It costs you little to nothing. You basically are taking away the populist voice, the people who pay taxes. You're taking away their power, using them to leverage the oligarchs power. Right. And ultimately they do what mm. they want to do against the will of the people. And this is what's happening in Canada. It's happening in Europe and it's happening here. Oh, this is conspiracy. No, it's not. No, it's not. Why? Listen, listen, I don't like what Carrie Lake did over the last week or so. She basically stabbed all the pro-life people that voted for her right in the back because now all of a sudden she recognizes a right to abortion. Don't ask me where that came from. OK, but here's the thing. We have the head of the Republican Party in Arizona on tape that she recorded basically telling her you're a threat to the establishment. There's a lot of money in this for you. I'm paraphrasing. There's a lot of money in this for you. And she basically said no. Now, I'll credit her with that, okay? And I'm still disgusted with her. You can watch a video um, on X that I put up about her and Trump, by the way, who also stabbed us in the back a bit. Um, but having said that, we know their game. 
they get to people they get to people who are in positions to sway these things it happened in georgia it happened in some of these other states they this way they have plausible deniability well it wasn't us that did it the republican did it right because you got to him listen you get a working class guy joe some of these guys that are in these offices they don't have a lot of money you throw 10 million dollars in front of them and say there's 10 million dollars in an account in the uh in the cayman islands in other words but you're going to do what we tell you to do just like they offered carrie lake okay i don't know how much they offered her but they basically offered her her a substantial amount of money all right then you wonder why these things happen. What, bribery all of a sudden ended because this is America? Politicians in America walk on water. They're not susceptible to bribes and corruption. That's exactly what happened in 2020. Why else would Republican judges not want to look at the evidence? Why would Republican secretaries of state and Republican governors like Ducey here in Arizona, okay? Why wouldn't you want to at least look at the evidence and explore it? Why? Well, it's going to create civil unrest. What have you had since then? Civil unrest. Because you effing cheated and everybody knows you cheated. And you think we're just going to sit here and we're going to do nothing about it. Because like I said, Joe, if they don't cheat, first of all, you mentioned debate. They're never going to debate because if they did, they wouldn't get elected dog, dog catcher. And it's the same with a straight up, a straight up debate, a straight up election. Like you said, you got to show up paper. Um, uh, you're going to, you're going to, it's a paper ballot. You're going to show up. You're going to show ID. You're going to you're going to vote. There's going to be uh, poll watchers there. So no shenanigans take place. Joe, if that happens, they'll lose New Jersey if that happens. And they know it. You want to know why? And then I'm going to hand it over to you. This is not a, a we just mentioned the Kennedys. John Kennedy was a liberal. RFK, uh, uh, Robert F. Kennedy, his brother, was a liberal. OK, these people are insane that run the Democrat party now. No way John F. Kennedy would have supported this party. No way Bobby Kennedy would have supported this party, okay? These people are insane. Their ideas are insane, and they have to pull all this nonsense, Joe Restinello, because that's the only way they could get elected to office. I'm throwing it over to you. No, the party would not even support Bill Clinton. If Bill Clinton ran on, on his, his platform of, his in the platform 90s, he now, loses. The Democrats would not. That is where I've said, and we've said this from the very beginning, this is not the Democratic Party of your grandfather. And right. I'm not the only person who's saying that out there. It simply isn't. And RFK is a Democrat. He's just a Democrat. So was Howard Schultz. He was going to be the third party candidate. He got cancer. He ran Starbucks the last election. He's a Democrat and he couldn't run in his own party because they didn't want him. I'll be honest with you. And this is the sick part. Too many people have political identity. They belong to the tribe. They can't see past that. And that's the sad reality. These people don't represent you. In fact, they're hurting you. They're hurting you. And it's not about Donald Trump anymore. It's about the, the the rule of law. It's about the fact that you have the audacity to not vote for an establishment candidate, whether they're Republican or not. It was OK that you voted for John McCain in their mind. It was OK that you voted for Mitt Romney, even though they attacked those guys relentlessly. OK, John McCain, what a what a disgraciad turncoat he turned out to be. In other words, the, the left who he became friends with because he hated Donald Trump so much. They called him a Nazi. They called him a fascist. They called him a racist. Same with Mitt Romney. Then Mitt Romney wants to get out of there, get out and march with Black Lives Matter. I am so, so regretful, Joe, that I voted for McCain and Romney. And you could throw W into that mix, too, who I voted for twice. But where did you, Joe Resinello, where did you get the audacity? to vote for Donald Trump. Who the hell do you think you are voting for your own interests? Well, how dare you? That's their attitude, Joe, and you know it. Well, you know, it's sad. Donald Trump will do more for the average Democrat in America than, than, the, than their own than party. Joe Biden. And that's the sad reality of this. Because people can't see past their tribe. They can't see past their hate. There is not even a doubt in my mind, <clears throat> not even a doubt in my mind that you will see immediately a difference in your checking account. Immediately. Yet they still won't do it because they can't see. This is the thing, Joe. I'll be honest with you. It's sad. It's, I have never seen anything like it before in my entire life. I work with people that will complain about the violence on the streets of New York and in the subway. 
and then they'll vote for Joe Biden again. And the, and those and those people voted for Bill De Blasio and probably voted for Eric Adams. And it's it, there's something wrong, right? Because you know what it is? It's it's just tribal. It's a tribal mentality. You can't go against the tribe. And 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 ultimately, this is their religion. I think you're right about the tribal aspect, but I also and I've said this on the show before, and I do credit E. Michael Jones because he's the one who who, who says it over and over and over and over again. Sexual liberation is political control. This is the party of contraception, abortion, gay marriage, transgenderism, and people in the, and even conservatives. Joe, we gotta we have to watch our conservative butts because conservatives, in the name of freedom. OK, or say, well, yeah, of course, somebody has a right to transition. Of course, if two men want to get married, Sean Hannity sent um, what's his name? Guy Benson got uh, got, got married to his uh, b- to, to his boyfriend. OK, um, and Sean Hannity sent the case of wine. And, you know, if Sean Hannity sent in a case of wine. That's a pretty expensive case of wine. Sean Hannity doesn't care about gay marriage. He doesn't care about the real issues that are destroying America, Canada, Europe, all over the world. You know, who's not affected by this Africa. Because you know what happens in Africa if you try to push this down their throat? I, I, I mean, go look. I, I, me, and my, me, and my, me and my son, we joke all the time because uh, there's a video going around with an African reporter. And uh, he's, he's interviewing this, this, this man uh, or this woman who's a, who basically is a lesbian, but she's dressed like a man. And it's all confused. And the guy starts out the conversation. He presents the interview. He welcomes the audience to arrest it all. And then he looks at his guest and he says, so let me ask you. Why are you gay? And I just, I just, I lose it because you want to know what there's, there's so much truth and honesty in that question. Same with the president of Uganda when he was in, when he was questioned by Christine Amanpour. In other words, where he says, "Listen, sodomy is disgusting. You're in, you're you're talking to me about human rights. You're talking about sodomy. It's disgusting." Okay, um, and and it, they're much more honest in Africa. But my larger point is, we've been sold this bill of goods. Part of it, because I agree with you on the tribalistic aspect of it, all right? But much of it has to do with the fact that people want their contraception. Uh, lately, the con- the conservatives even are hammering on IVF, um, you know, because they know that's, that's you know, that's a winner for the Democrats because IVF staying legal, contraception, of course, abortion, gay marriage, all of it. Joe, these are the things that ruin a society. These are the things that ruin a culture. How else do you get people like Gavin Newsom into a, a running the fifth largest economy in the world, if it wasn't for the fact that he's just going to sell you sex, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll culture. And guess what? That's what people want, Joe. That's what a lot of people want. Well, Joe, you're right. And, and sadly, they do it at their own demise. And you don't have to look far. California has turned into a South American country. It's the very rich and the very poor. The middle class doesn't exist on the coast. It simply doesn't. And ultimately... As this regime continues to progress, that's what's going to happen across the whole entire country. That is what's going to happen across America. The middle class is going to disappear completely, completely disappear. And this is, and and people better wake up that this is why they vote against their own interests. You're voting against your own interests. It's like Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau is selling the Canadian people and has been selling them a bad bill of goods, just like he just did with this new budget. Oh, he's going to tax the very rich and help out Gen Z. What's he going to do to help you? You have to help yourself, but ultimately the government has to create a structure whereby you can create a situation that you could help yourself. You can't buy a house in Canada. The average person, it's no longer within your reach. You can buy buy a house. house. You you could buy a house in America. In other words, I live, I live in Scottsdale. We rent. Okay. So I'm in Scottsdale. Scottsdale is a wealthy town, Joe. Okay. Oh, I know that. But but we rent. I I can't buy a house here. Are you kidding me? But uh, here's the thing. If you want an affordable house, you got, you got to go out into the desert. You got, you got to go out into the outskirts. Okay. Around here. Same in New Jersey. Well, well, New Jersey's different because you can't own a house really anywhere except the Jersey Shore. And even there, you can't own a house anymore. Used to be you had to go down there if you wanted to uh, buy a home that was uh, less expensive. All right. But now they've gotten to the, the shore also because the property values have gone up. Property values have gone up because people have moved there and the taxes have gone up because state of New Jersey never met a tax it didn't like. Um, but that's the thing. You, you, you They want to. They want to push you around. They want to push you into different places. They want to push you into 15-minute cities, okay? Um, and, and if you're not, you're going to live in some East Bumble you-know-what, okay? Um, and, and not for nothing, I mean, 
when it comes to the middle class, Joe, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, and this is not false humility. Um, if I had money, you wouldn't really know it. You, you, you really wouldn't. Okay. Would I drive a nicer car? Yeah. All right. Would I own a home or own my home and own a nicer home? Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, but you wouldn't really know. You wouldn't say that guy's really rich. Joe, I'm around rich people all the time because I'm in the restaurant business. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. These people are super dupy wealthy. They, they, they wear it on their sleeves. My larger point is Joe, I like being in the middle class. I like it. I'm comfortable there. Uh, and that's, I'm not blasting rich people. I've met a lot of wonderful rich people that I could have hours long conversations with. Okay. But at the end of the day, I like being in the middle class. They're my people. And if you're trying to destroy the middle class, when are people going to wake up and say, no, we're not going to let you do that. Barack Obama. Cause that's but who's they, really, you know, but the thing is Barack they Obama. listen to, they listen to the news and that's why I don't listen to any of it. I don't listen to Fox. I don't listen to any of it because they're pitting us against each other. And basically the oligarchs are running us over and that's what's happened in Canada. That's what's happening in America. Joe Biden, look at the inflation numbers. Look at the increase in cost. It's absurd. And that is a tax on the poor, the upper right. middle class and the rich can weather it. It doesn't, if bread goes up from $2.50 for a loaf of bread to $4.50, rich people still buy four loaves when they go shopping. Poor people don't. Right. When milk goes up a dollar, a dollar fifty a gallon, poor people who have children suffer. When gasoline goes up a dollar and 25 cents a gallon, Poor people, it's a tax on the poor. Right. But people don't connect it. And th the sad part is many of these people vote for Joe Biden. They vote for Justin Trudeau. And I just say to myself, listen, I can excuse if you're rich and you want to vote for Justin Trudeau, you're worth a few million, you make a million dollars a year, and you want to vote for him. We'll agree to disagree. But if you're barely making it and you support Justin Trudeau or you vote for Joe Biden, I'll be honest with you. You're crazy. Oh, you're, 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 and, you're and I don't know what else to say. I actually feel more sorry than I am mad at you. It's Joe, sad. listen, I could justify on the level of sanity. And I don't like attacking people because they vote differently than me. And I'm not doing that. And I know that you're not doing that. But you do have to ask yourself. Okay, can I defend my vote for Donald Trump twice? I can. I based can on, too. Based, based on a number of different ideas. Uh, forget about all that nonsense about Stormy Daniels. Forget about the fact that he's divorced. Just talk about policy issues, standing up against China, reworking NAFTA, working, at, uh, looking out for the working class, real tax reform, even though he didn't get everything he wanted, judges who are conservative and originalist judges. I could justify very... I, I, on that level of sanity saying, of course I voted for Donald Trump. Who am I supposed to vote for? And I've said that to liberals. Who would you like for me to vote for? Hillary Clinton? I don't think that somebody can actually justify voting for Joe Biden. Other than sexual liberation, other than abortion and things like that. I don't see why I don't cer certainly don't see how any working person would. But Joe, here's the thing. Let's let's talk about let's talk about information. Because that's the that's where we are. We're in the we're in the information area, okay? On Twitter, on X, or excuse me, X is Twitter. On X, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Rubble. If you're just joining us out there, Joe. By the way, we have a great crowd tonight. We've been consistently over 130, 140 just watching, and we God bless you all. Thank you. Stick with us. We have about another ten minutes because these are informative things, Joe. If there's not a free flow of information. There's going to be a problem in this country, and I I mean like a violent problem. I'm saying I'm I'm proposing that I'm not okay. If you start taking away people's First Amendment rights, Joe, what number am I holding up? One, First Amendment rights, right, right to free speech, freedom of religion, freedom of association, okay, freedom of the press. If you start taking away these rights, people are going to start getting pretty angry, okay? They're, they're already angry. They're going to get angrier, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, NPR, last time I checked, Joe, National Public Radio is public radio. That means they get tax money. That means you don't get to do what you want. You're not WABC in New York. Okay. You're not W you're not WKRP in Cincinnati. Remember That'd that be show? Better. That'd All right. Be better. 
Right. Yeah. You're not WKRP Cincinnati where you're privately owned. You are paid by taxpayer dollars. That means Catherine Marr, mayor, whatever her name is, who I'm about to show our audience at the front line with Joe and Joe. No, you don't control. You don't control anything as far as speech because we have a First Amendment. So, Joe, here. This is Catherine Marr says the number one. This is, by the way, I want to give credit where it's due. This was posted on X by Chris Rufo. Anybody on X, I would recommend following Chris Christopher F. Rufo. He's awesome. You get a you get a lot of exclusive stuff from this guy. He's great. Catherine Mayer says the number one challenge in her fight against different disinformation is the First Amendment in the United States, which makes it quote a little bit tricky to quote censor bad information and the influence peddlers that spread it here have a listen one challenge here that we we see and is of course the first amendment in the united states pro is a fairly robust um uh, protection of rights and and that is a protection of rights both for platforms which i actually think is very important that platforms have those rights to be able to regulate what kind of content they want on their sites but it also means that it, it is a little bit tricky to really address some of the real challenges of where does bad information come from and sort of the influence peddlers who have made a real market economy. So here's the thing, Joe. Okay. It gets a little bit, see the first amendment for them gets a little bit tricky. You know what I'm saying, Joe? It gets, get, you know, it's a little bit tricky. Okay. Because we got to get around that because Joe and Joe shouldn't have the right to say what they want. They're spreading misinformation and disinformation and they're liars, even though they can't point out anything that we said is a lie. Okay, opinions are not lies. You can disagree with them. But if something's my opinion, argue with me. Okay. But the fact is, we don't lie at the front line with Joe and Joe. We call them out for what they are. But see, Joe, it's disinformation and you got that First Amendment and it's very tricky. Why is, why is it tricky, Catherine? Why is it tricky? It's tricky because it's a right that I have from God, which has been a big controversy lately because that one reporter, I believe it was on CNN, turns around, you know, these white Christian nationalists, they actually believe their rights come from God. Well, where do they come from, sweetheart? OK, so anyway, my point being is this. Of course, it's tricky. It's designed that way. It's designed so people like you, Catherine Mayer, whether you're own, whether you own Twitter, or whether you own Facebook, you cannot censor free speech. You can't. And if you do, and I can't wait, I wish conservatives would actually do this, Joe, and then I'm going to hand it over to you. I wish the Ted Cruz's of the world and everybody else start stripping away the protections that social media companies have when they've decided to be publishers and editors, okay, and let them be exposed this way, like you said, this way they could get sued and money moves the dial. But that's another conversation for another day. But Joe, I guess the First Amendment, it's a little tricky. When the lie loses its power, you have to censor. You see, for years, they controlled the mainstream media, and they still do. They control the messaging, and the messaging controls the populace. So does the schools. That's why they have their agenda in the schools. That is a problem. However, now with social media, and you have voices like Russell Brand, Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson, who get millions and millions of views. And that is a problem. And that's why it's tricky. And then they come up with these buzzwords and they gaslight you and they say it's against democracy and it's tricky and it's all this other business. They basically use all it's disinformation. It's hate speech. It's racism. All it is, is censorship. Nothing more than censorship. It's not against democracy. It's actually about democracy. In a democracy, if you don't have free speech, you don't have a democracy. And when the lie loses its power, you have to censor. That is why Rumble got thrown out of France. That is why Rumble got thrown out of Brazil. And as we speak, they're trying to get rid of Twitter in Brazil right. because they have to control the message. And they, and they control it by, by again, we our job here is to try to uh, educate as best we can, you know, for as much as, much as we know. Perhaps uh, those out there listening to us at the front line with Joe and Joe know this. Perhaps you don't. Remember something. The whole concept, the construct called hate speech was developed at the Harvard Legal Studies, Critical Legal Studies Department and other Marxist law departments for ways to do what this woman just said, to get around the First Amendment. How do you get around the First Amendment? Well, you have the right to speak. Of course you do. 
except if you're spreading hate. Well, who determines what's hate? Okay. If you're black and I and I criticize the welfare system in America and you turn around and say, well, you're a racist. Okay, well, that's that doesn't cut the mustard. All right. If you if you say something that you don't like about Catholic, if you say something about Catholic priests uh, and the priestly press, uh, uh, the pre sex abuse scandal over the last 50 years, I'm not going to try to shut you down. It happened. We own it. OK. And we have to deal with it as, as, as Roman Catholics. But things I'm not looking to shut you down. I'm not going to call you a hater. You might very well be. But I don't have the right to tell you you can't say it. I have a right to respond to you. I have a right to call you out on the carpet. I have the right to call you and challenge you to debate me on a particular topic. But I don't have the right to tell the United States government in the name of hate speech to shut you down. And that's what they've done. That's what they've done with religion. That's what they've done with freedom of speech is that we have to couch it a certain way. So you could practice your Catholic faith, but but only to a degree, because if you practice your Catholic faith and actually believe it and say you believe it, well, now you're entering into areas of hate speech. And then they, they use that as a means by which they could censor you. So Representative Dan Goldman, who I really, really makes my stomach turn, he gets up there and he starts challenging Jim Jordan at, in the House last month, in the House of Representatives, and saying, you know, I'm tired of hearing like this idea that the left doesn't concern ourselves with uh, we're, we're, we 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 don't value free speech, that 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 we don't value the First Amendment. Uh, what we say is we just, of course, we value free speech. We're just concerned with misinformation and disinformation. Eh, Dan, wrong, wrong. You, who's going to determine what that is, Dan? You still haven't made that clear. Is it going to be you? Because you're going to try to shut me down because you don't like what I say. That means that the freedom of speech that we have protected by the First Amendment of the Constitution, Joe, and I'm going to hand it over to you, is as close as you could get to absolute, except for the incitement of violence. Okay? And you can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater. But outside of that, Joe and Joe could say whatever the hell we want. So could Tucker Carlson. So could Joe Rogan. So could Russell Brand. And so could anybody else out there who wants to state their opinion on abortion and all these other issues. And you can't call me a hater. And in fact, if you do... I should be able to sue you and win. Joe, what do you say? Well, it's interesting you said that because uh, who was that young lady who just sued, uh, sued Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg for tw uh, 10, uh, 10 million bucks? Uh, Gaines? Um, uh, oh, Riley Gaines. Uh, well, oh, I didn't know that. Did she really? She got 10 million out of, uh, out of Whoopi because she, she slandered her. And that's how basically we have to keep the media in check. That's that right. has we've talked about that. I'm not going to read all Joe. The I'm not going to beat that down again. Talking about Sullivan versus uh, New York Times, that has to go. However, ultimately, you're going to see more of this. Ireland is also censoring. You can go in in I believe the UK. They could go into your house if they believe your computer has some type of like information and or like like you're spreading disinformation that could actually come into your house. This is how they're trying to control people because they know they have to. And this should open people's eyes. You see, this is the good thing that came out of the COVID and the social media era. It's showing people how we've been lied to, how we've been manipulated. And just because, to your point, Joe, you don't agree with somebody or what they're saying goes against your platform, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Do your own research. The research is out there. We can do our own research. I invite people to do it. Right. Turn off the mainstream media. Turn off Fox. Turn off Sean Hannity. I don't listen to any of them. They have no original thoughts. All of it is simply just regurgitating talking points. They don't connect dots. The left does it too. All they do is try to rally their base, divide the country, and then nothing gets resolved. That's People right. have to understand what's going on. Look at facts and then also go to common sense. Open up your refrigerator. Look at your checkbook. Look at your checkbook and stop lying to yourself. Well, also ask yourself a question. If you're one of these blue collar dads who has a son and, and you're voting for Joe Biden, do you really want your kid, your, your son to come home and say, daddy, I think I'm a girl and I want you to support me in that. That guy's going to say, who the hell told you that? My father would have given me a backhand and Joe, sent me to my room. That Joe, is here's, nothing the thing. here's the thing. And then I'm going to want your comments because we're going to wrap it up soon. Okay. Now I want you all out there who are listening to us at the front line with Joe and Joe. 
who have been awesome tonight. Okay, the best crowd we've had in a while, and it's only growing from here. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an example of something, Joe, and then I want to play you. I want to play you a little bit of a, a clip. Uh, Jack Posobiec was on with Taylor Marshall. Okay, and talking about really important things. Um, but did you? If you heard this, if you want to see the state of America, and then I'm gonna play this clip. Bill Maher on his show said to uh, uh, Piers Morgan and a couple of others that were there, he goes, well, you know, pro-life people are not really anti-women. They just believe, and I'm paraphrasing pretty close, they just believe that abortion is murder, which it kind of is, but I'm just okay with that because there's 8 billion people in the world. And he said, no, and, they, and no one will care. And right, and no it. one will care. We, we, and we will. Piers Morgan and God will. agrees with him. After well, he, he, he defers to him and he shakes his head. Yes, I well, agree. Who's, the, who's that? Uh, Pierce Morgan, who Pierce like, Morgan, who calls himself Catholic, uh, who says I'm I'm pro choice. He but nods he, his head. He goes, "You don't agree with it. You don't disagree with it. You, you, you like he basically gets like he wants some affirmation. He gets it, right? And at least Bill Maher though is honest, and honest I'm, about it. Again, but I'm I don't gonna tell you Bill this, Maher at all. honestly, not to go off on that tangent, but I just had a comment on it. Go ahead. Joe. We recently just spoke about that with Father Imperato, Joe. No one cares, and that it. No one cares. We're at a state in America where somebody could say, I am, this is murder and I'm for it and have no problem with it. And no one cares. Right. Joe, I'll be honest with you. If that doesn't step back from that for a minute and you just think about it in Canada, you are allowing the state to take the lives of your poor people who say they're depressed because they're a burden on society and no one cares. Right. That's what happens when you take G.O.D. out of a country. That's what happens when you take G.O.D. out of your leadership and secular humanists run everything. They are dangerous people and you're next because oh. that door is going to get larger and larger and larger. And it has, and it has in a right. short period of time. If you think I'm lying to you, I got news for you. You're going to find out because it is going to grow as the state gets more burdened by financial difficulties. It's going to be very easy to make people disappear like in Canada through the MAID program, like in Nova Scotia when they're looking at your medical records, it's going to get easier and easier because they don't believe in G-O-D. Let's play this clip real quick. And everybody stick with us. We have a little bit more time, but here's the most important part of the show because as Joe said, this is why we end up with the Justin Trudeaus and the Joe Bidens of the world and the many, many other uh, of their ilk. Uh, have a listen to this. Moses, I put before you today life and death. And he says, choose life. So there's a binary decision for every human person. It was given to Adam. It was given to Eve. It's getting given to us. And in the West, in the United States of America, in Europe, I guess you can consider Australia as part of the West because it's part of the, the Western Christian tradition. People more and more are choosing a culture of death. They're, they're choosing chaos and not logos. They're choosing darkness and not light, you know, and that has cultural ramifications. You know, we wonder why everything is in decay and is in chaos. And that's because God is not at the center of our culture, our civilization, our laws, our families, et cetera. And so that's going to create a vacuum and, Satan will fill that vacuum, and we're seeing that right now all over the world, so much so. I mean, we talked about this. Saying something as innocent as Christ is king, you get attacked for that. You know, I, I was talking to Steve Bannon about that recently on his show. You know, he's like, how do we get to the point where saying Christ is king is now hate speech? I had a Okay, he's Taylor Marshall there is making our point. How are we at that point? You see, it's called hate speech. If you say Christ is king, and we're just using that as an example, and that's called hate speech, Joe, I hate to think what real hate speech is then. 
So I think that makes. I think the Jack Posobiec, Taylor Marshall, I think you know they're making making all the sense in the world. We said this at the front line with Joe and Joe. We were. I think we were. I think we were fairly prophetic about this. Okay, when we said watch, we did an interview with Father Stephen and Barato. Uh, which is on X, on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. And you want to see the state of abortion right now? Go watch that interview. We did it this morning, and we posted it immediately, okay? Joe, here's the difference between Roe versus Wade under that regime and now under Dobbs where abortion goes back to the states. Joe, now we're choosing abortion along with every all, all of its other attendant features. Now we're choosing it. God help us, Joe. God help us, because before we didn't choose it, it was imposed on America by the Supreme Court, by Roe versus Wade. Now we're choosing it. How disgusting. Joe, ultimately, the secular humanists in Canada and the U.S. and in Australia and in Europe are trying to legislate morality. This has been tried and it will fail as it has failed in the past. You cannot legislate morality. Morality is learned in families and the family union is destroyed. It is absolutely demolished. 40% of our children are born out of wedlock and over half the marriages in America and in divorce. It has resulted in wounded children, in depression, in suicide, and in mental illness. And until we get the family right, and until we find our North Star, and we're not pushing a theocracy, I'm not going to lie to you. I am Catholic, and I believe everything the Catholic Church teaches, but we live in a pluralistic society, and God does not impose god proposes and can so i interject do- one thing there in sure. a pluralistic society disparate groups of people joe could still come together and recognize what's insane and what's not That's even exactly- in a pluralistic society and that is what i'm getting at basically listen i am not going to impose my religion on anybody but at the end of the day there are some common threads that benefit the society like marriage between a man and a woman like strong families, like allowing people to practice their faith in the public square, which helps them to get grounded, to have common sense, and to treat people like they want to be treated. And that's not going on. And you cannot legislate morality. And that is what Justin Trudeau is trying to do. And that is what Joe Biden is trying to do. And it does not work. And society has gotten worse under their leadership. Be honest with yourself. Simply be honest with yourself because it has. And it's not going to get better under their leadership or people like them. We have to get back to first principles and basics. And I'm not imposing my religion on anyone. But what I am saying is this. Religion gives people a North Star. And families, strong families, build a healthy society. We have neither, and that's why why we're in the situation we are in, and it's only going to get worse. Listen, that's a perfect place to end it, Joe. I wish we were ending on a positive note. Maybe we will in the future. We had a little fun here tonight, but like you said, I don't see it getting better anytime soon. Hopefully, God surprises us. Joe, just relax. Put on the uh, ocean. Just one more time. (laughs) No, listen. For those of you joining us here at the front line with Joe and Joe, this is how we started the show with these insane people. Watch this clip. He gets, he gets sucked back. Joe, if that was on the Jersey Shore, they would have been hitting those guys with baseball bats. So we want to thank you out there. Please do us a favor. From our hearts, we love you all for watching us, sticking with us. Some of our, we, have some, we have some old friends in the, uh, in the chat tonight, some new friends, um, and we really appreciate your support. We had our best show viewing-wise. Uh, we'll see how, how it picks up afterwards. But what could really help us pick it up is if you're watching on Rumble, on X, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, excuse me, on YouTube, 
uh, please share this video. Like it. Subscribe to the front line with Joe and Joe. All right. And please share it. OK, uh, we think we're having fun over here. We're having a good conversation. We play a couple good clips. Uh, we, we're just uh, we're just the every man. There's nothing special about Joe and I. We have big mouths, but that was given to us by God. But we could see we see clearly. OK, we see the problems clearly and we like to talk about them. And we're not interested in shutting you down. And we're going to fight against anybody who's going to try to shut you down or try to shut us down. And one thing we'll do that they won't do, Joe Resinello, we'll call them to the carpet. You disagree with us? You come right on the show. You come right on the show if you disagree with us. We don't care who you are, what power position of power you're in. If you disagree with Joe and I on anything we've said, you come on the show and we'll defend everything we said. And that's a promise because we're not, you're afraid of us, but we're not afraid of you. Thanks once again. Remember, we go live Thursday nights, every Thursday night, unless something really bad happens, which God willing, it won't. Every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we're all across social media. One more time. Thank you. One more time. Please share this video. And remember, until the next time that our conversation is your conversation and that conversation is going on everywhere.